joining us right now on the Oakland County Megacast is the CEO, Annie Van Gelger. We just yeah. talked about your last name. Hey, Annie, how are you? Good. What is this? Good. I don't have my glasses on because there's a reflection from the light. And so I'm trying to read my handwriting without glasses. It's impossible. That's all right. People screw up my name, whether they have their glasses on or not. It's Van Gelderen. <laughs> well, Annie, it's great to have you here on the Oakland County Megacast. Uh, how are things going for you and your team over at the Art Center? Are you open right now during the pause? We are. We are with um, limited occupancy, of course. Um, things are kind of slowing down. We're just ending our uh, classes just before the Thanksgiving break. Um, talk about pivoting. Obviously, we've done the pivot as well. Um, we're only offering adult classes right now, and our youth classes are all virtual. But um, they're just finishing up their semester, and then um, come December 3rd, all things going positive is we'll open up our holiday shop, which will be open to the public. So for those not familiar with the Art Center, fill us in on your location and what you all do there and what you offer. So we're all about visual arts. So um, we have many, many classes for both adult and youth. We say three to 93, but I will attest that we have some students who are over 93. Um, and we're offering all types of medium, painting, ceramics, jewelry, metals, et cetera, for both youth and adult. Now, of course, during this pandemic, we've had to change our occupancy so that our studio spaces um, are filled with about 60% oh, less than what we would normally run, but our classes are still running and um, we have not had one incident of COVID. We are re absolutely requiring masks and social distancing. And luckily we have a 25,000 square foot building. So we're able to spread out. And um, for the last few months, we've had exhibitions. We just finished an exhibition and people were able to come from, um, from the public to come and view the exhibitions and everyone wore the masks. And um, it was really quite lovely and people kept saying how wonderful it was to be able to experience something in person rather than on video. And yet, because art is such an expression of one's um, self. And so how is that working? I know you said you're teaching like the kids are virtual. How is that working with them? Well, unfortunately there's Zoom fatigue with um, for some of the youth, but um, we're still trying to do it instead of going into the semesters, we're actually creating shorter workshops for kids. And then we've also um, been offering since the second week of March, a children's art activity kit for just $15. And they have anywhere from eight to 10 different projects within the kit. And we've been mailing those to home and those are only $15, as I said. And then every week we're doing an art challenge that's multi-generational. And you can get that in our e-blast and it's for using things that you might have at home, whether it's spices or paper or newspaper. And it's a way to, to do something creative um, with the things you have at home. And then of course, we always have a nice little art lesson with that so that you can have that connection. Um, so we're trying to make sure that people still are being creative. I think it's so important now more than ever to be able to take some time aside, focus on something other than the news around you. And um, also for parents to have a, a, an avenue to work something with their children as well, that's fun. Yeah, and have you seen more parents are getting involved in doing some of these projects with their kids? We've sold over 600 kits since the second week of March. We have grandparents buying kits and we're mailing them to Florida or California. Um, everywhere uh, and our virtual children's classes, we've had cousins or friends from different states join in on the class. So this way they're having some kind of social connection with their relatives or friends who may have moved away. So um, it's, it's amazing. You think about all the audiences that you might try to reach and never did we think in March that we were going to reach audiences in Chicago or LA 
or Portland? I would say that number, 600 kits, seems astounding uh, to me. Such a large number that you're mailing out. When you say kits, can you explain some of the items that people are getting? Yeah, so um, unfortunately I don't have one in front of me, um, but we have one right now that's specifically for Thanksgiving. And there are eight different projects in the kit and it contains all the materials um, to do these projects with the instructions. Uh, next week, we will be kicking off a winter project kit. And again, it'll have eight or 10 different projects within it. All the materials are included. So for example, this kit, we have um, paint and clay and paint brushes and colored pencils and the paper, everything you need to do all these different projects, all within the kit and very simple instructions. Um, so parents can help the youngest, we say from like four or five and up. And then once they're in middle school, they can pretty much do it self on their own. Who comes up with the designs uh, in the projects to go into the kits? So I don't sleep. Um, <laughs> we um, we're constantly thinking about things. You now we change these kits every two to three weeks. And we have an incredible youth program director who um, comes up with a lot of the different ideas. I come up with a lot of the different ideas. We play off each other and then we order the materials and then we assemble them in, in kit form um, so that they're ready to be mailed out. One of the things we are hearing from people, uh, teachers or professors or you know, people such as yourself is they are actually working so many more hours because even if they're working remotely, they're constantly trying to, you know, like you said, come up with new ways to do things. Do you find that happening with you and your staff as well? Absolutely. Um, as I said before, now is more than ever, it's, it's nice to take an hour or two break from everything that is, you know, around you, whether it's work or the news or, or um, sickness. So uh, to be able to focus on just an art project um, really takes your mind off of things. It also gives you some kind of um, happiness when you actually complete something on your own. And, and we make sure that whether it's the art challenge or the art kits, that you're going to be successful. Uh, you know, we don't want people to feel frustrated, yet they're a little higher level than what you would normally get at like a Michaels or something like that. Because face it, working here at the Art Center, we're all artists, we're all professional artists. We are been in this art world for many, many years. And um, one of the things about the Art Center is, you know, always offering quality programming and the pandemic is not stopping us. What do you see going forward? What have you learned that's been a benefit that you think you'll keep doing after the pandemic? Well, we think these art kits are going to be probably with us for a very, very long time. We've always offered offered some free youth programming, whether it's at our art fair or other community events um, under a children's at art activity tent. So while we can't have the masses um, to do that, we want to still be able to provide um, an opportunity to be creative. Uh, I think our art challenges will continue to go on. People have had great response to that. And we're actually encouraging them once they do the art challenge to send us an image and then we'll post it on our social media site. And we've had raffles as well for our membership to do that. And then our holiday shop was a great opportunity to see over 200 artists. It's record breaking this year. And partly is because we have so many artists who haven't been able to do the art fair circuit um, for almost a full year. So they've been quite receptive to have their wares here at the holiday shop. And um, we're, we're excited to be able to help artists. I mean, this is what we do. It's part of our mission. And I think it'll be an opportunity for the public to make an impact as well for these lives that have been um, hurt because of the pandemic and um, help the art center as well. We are a nonprofit. And so with that, Annie, tell us a little bit more about the Holiday Shop. When is it and how can the public 
attend? Is it all going to be in person or will some of the items be um, offered up virtually for sale as well? Well, um, it starts December 3rd to the 21st, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday and noon to four on Sunday. Um, we are going to be open to the public. We will be monitoring how many people are coming into the building. But as I said, we have a 25,000 square foot building. So I think it is it is manageable. Um, masks are required. And then we will have an online, probably the item of the day. Once it's gone, it's gone. Um, because every piece in the holiday shop is unique. It's artisan made. So um, it'll probably be an item of the day and we will offer that online um, and offer free shipping as well. Or you can do curbside pickup. And Annie, you um, had mentioned a little bit about some of the artists not being able to do the art fair circuit. In your discussions with them, how are they doing? How are they surviving during this crisis? And what happens if it continues for another six months? It's it is tragic. Um, so when you think about an art fair artist, they usually start in the winter in the Florida or Arizona or California. And then as the weather turns, they start moving up to the Midwest. Well, by March, all art fairs were closed. And, and again, many of these artists, the majority of them go from art fair to art fair. And they're not getting a PPP loan. They are, you know, self-employed. So once they lose that revenue stream, it, it's gone. And so um, artists have been tragically um, impacted by this pandemic. And I think that's why we have over 200 artists participating this year in our holiday shop. It's a form for them to at least eke out a little bit of revenue at the end of the year. We're keeping our fingers crossed that um, late spring, we might be able to start having art fairs again. I know many of the Florida fairs in January and February have already been canceled. Um, we have, the Art Center has our Art Birmingham Art Fair on Mother's Day weekend, and we're hoping that we can do it. Um, it'll be probably smaller than our normal um, art fair participants just because we want to control how many people are coming. But um, we're hoping that we can do that because last year we did have to cancel the art fair. Annie Van Geldern with us on the Oakland County Megacast. She is the CEO of the Birmingham Bloomfield Art Center. And so uh, your holiday shop, it's going to feature, of course, 200 plus artists uh, with, their origin with some original works and, and this particular year, the holiday shop is also going to benefit those artists as well. Can you explain a little bit about where th this year's proceeds are going to go and how they will benefit these, these artists in a year that's been a, a big struggle for a lot of them? Sure, so um, the Art Center takes a small commission for all the sales, which help fund all our programming here. Um, again, as I said, we're a nonprofit, and um, this year we have been, you know, severely impacted as well. All our fundraising events have been canceled, but then um, the artists will get paid. They don't have to be on site, which is a beautiful thing. We cover all the sales taxes, and then they get the majority of the um, income. We start distributing checks starting January, um, and then whatever was shipped here, we ship back. Um, and then, of course, a lot of the artists, I'd say the majority of the artists are um, Michigan based um, and they'll pick up their their merchandise as well, unless we carry it in our gallery shop that runs all year round. Yeah, you know, Annie, I think about some of these artists and even when a vaccine starts to become available, you wonder, is the public ever going to feel comfortable going to an art fair because it, they're so popular. Uh, we have the one here in West Bloomfield every single year or over at, you know, Orchard Lake St. Mary's. They're extremely popular, but you wonder how long is it going to take the public to feel comfortable to be around large crowds again? And then from an artist standpoint, they have to be wondering the same thing. And, and how long are they going to be able to continue uh, to do what they're doing? Are you seeing some people maybe um, give up? on their art to go back to maybe a mainstream job? 
Uh, it's that's a tough question. Um, just from uh, our personal perspective for uh, how we are pivoting for our Birmingham coming up Mother's Day weekend, there are you know new rules and regulations, and um, I think the the largest uh, hiccup is people gathering inside a tent because something that's really popular, sometimes you'll get it, go inside a tent and have, you know, 20 or 30 people and you can just have shoulder room. So we have to definitely address that. And then obviously the person who's most impacted is the artist who's sitting in that tent. So um, there's some art fairs that are now questioning about having one side open so that there's free air coming in. But I think the general public misses these art fairs. I mean, it's always been a, something to to go out and do and something different and um, and being to have that interaction with the artists themselves. I always say when you buy a piece of art at an art fair, um, you start to learn the story behind the piece of art, whether it's a ceramic bowl or whether it's a painting. And then when you take it home, that story becomes your story because you've had that interaction with the artist and there's always that memory. And then when people ask about a certain painting or something, of course, you're going to remember that story. And like I said, it becomes your story. So there's something really tangible there and that interaction. And I think now more than ever, we crave that. So I'm hoping that um, the art fairs are going to continue. I think the people will come out to support them. And uh, and same with our holiday shop. I think people were, are gonna be looking for that unique item and helping support, whether it's small businesses in, the, in our downtown Birmingham or downtown Rochester or the art center and other nonprofits. I think it's really important now more than ever. And um, we all love Amazon, but um, <laughs> this is the year to support the small businesses and nonprofits. And on top of that, when you're giving a gift, if you can give a gift with a story, it seems it means more, especially when it's someone local as well. Absolutely. And um, even though we have over 200 artists here at the Art Center, we have their bios. We know everything about them. We know the process. Um, the staff is really up on that so that if a customer asks a little bit about a ceramic bowl and trying to understand what it is, we can give them that information. Um, and then it gets passed on. So it, it is important. So Annie, you mentioned that uh, you are a nonprofit. How has it been for you and your team um, with fundraising and trying to keep the doors open right now? It has been a challenge, but we've plowed through. So we were definitely, we, we had um, canceled all our spring terms, all our summer terms, all our summer camps. Everything was canceled. All our fundraising events, our Art Birmingham Art Fair, our summer, um, Fine Art of Summer. And then this year, we this is the first time we're not having Shop and Champagne, which is the fundraiser that kicks off the holiday shop, just because we can't um, navigate two or 300 people here in the building eating and drinking. So all our fundraiser events have been canceled for this year. Um, uh, of course, we started doing our September classes. This is the first time we've started doing uh, classes mid-September, but at about 60% less occupancy. So, um, but we thought it was very important to then employ our instructors and give them an opportunity to teach. And then also for those who wish to come back to take classes in a safe environment, we thought that was really important. Um, so we are keeping our doors open. We're plugging along. Um, it is, it's really important. This art center has been around since 1957. Uh, our vision is art for all, and we follow that every single day. So whether it's an art kit, an art challenge, or coming here on site, taking an adult class or a youth virtual class, we're making it happen. And then we're continuing with our um, art access programming. So we have programming for Alzheimer's patients, for um, caregivers, et cetera. So we are doing those virtual um, for the time being, but we're still moving forward because we think it's really important. Oh, it is so important. And with that, if someone wants to 
possibly sign up for a class or to learn more about the Arts Center, where can they get that information? They can go to our website, bbartcenter.org, or just give us a call um, on our phone, 248-644-0866. Um, we're happy to help. Staff is full full blown here. We have everyone on staff still working and we're happy to help. We're happy to help with an art kit, anything that you need. And uh, again, December 3rd is when our um, holiday shop opens. So with the art classes, do they fill up pretty quickly or are there still a room? Is there still room available for people to sign up? So today's our first day of registration for our winter classes that start in January and the phones are ringing. So that's a good sign. Um, we're looking forward to that. Um, we're hoping January is the beginning of a new year and everything will be um, going strong. We're going to still keep our occupancy at about 50 to 60 percent less than what we would normally have in the class. But, you know, we didn't have a real problem as far as in our September, our fall classes, as far as people not getting in or if they couldn't get into a particular class, we were able to place them in a class that was very similar and uh, and then they were able to come in. So, yes, it starts today. It's hard to think it's going to be January, but it is winter. I know, but it, the weeks do fly by, I will say that. So um, give us a rundown. What are some of the classes that are available? Oh my goodness. So in our adult classes, we offer over 500 classes a year. Wow. So Monday through Saturday, um, Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. And uh, Friday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So we have a plethora of classes, everything from beginner and introductory to advanced. All our instructors are professional artists, and most of them teach at the college level. So they're teaching at CCS, Wayne State, U of M. Um, and so you're getting almost the idea, similar class that you would take at a college that you are getting here but with only about four or five people in the class. Um, so, uh, and about a third of the price because we subsidize most of the uh, tuition being a nonprofit. So it's a great opportunity. If you haven't taken a drawing class since middle school, we can teach you how to draw again. If you feel like making your first pair of earrings, we can help you do that or turn a bowl, we can do that as well in the ceramics department. So um, we have people from all forms of life. We have um, professionals who come here after uh, work. So for our evening classes, and we have everyone from nurses to physicians, to dentists, to teachers coming back. We have retirees who don't golf and want to take an art class. And, um, and of course our youth classes as well. Um, our youth classes are taught by the same uh, teachers that teach in the adult classes or our uh, certified teachers, art teachers in, in, um, in the public school system. Well, thank you so much for taking time to be with us. Uh, it does sound like the phones are ringing off the hook. So <laughs> good thing. Um, go get those phone lines and sign up uh, some people for your art classes and keep the art center open. We appreciate your time, Annie. Thank you so much.